Okay guys, welcome back to MoGraphLess.com. In this lesson, we want to talk about multi-light future. If you go to select your scene object and go to your engine tab, here you have this future called multi-light. At the moment it's disabled, but you can turn it to intensity or color. Now, multi-light future is one of the coolest future I've ever seen in a rendering engine. Multi-light basically allows you to uh, change the intensity and the color of your emitters, of your light sources, during or after the render without having to re-render your scene. Now imagine you uh, have a scene and after the render you uh, realize that uh, it would have been better if you actually uh, had this light a bit more intense and if it was uh, contributing to your scene a bit more than what you have or if you wanted to change the color of your light uh, after the render so multi-light exactly does that and it's very very great now uh, here's the scene that uh, i have and this is the exact same scene where we're, when we were discussing uh blockable emitters so as you can see we have this uh, abstract 3d object we have this stage and we have this uh, left emitter right emitter and top emitter here and each one of them has a separate emitter material applied to and if i uh, get to my camera here and render it to fire this is what we are gonna get now let me turn on my multi-light as you can see beside disabled you have two other option intensity and color if you choose intensity you only are gonna be able to change the intensity of your light after your render or during render but if you choose color uh, not only intensity, you are also going to be able to change the color of your light uh, after you are rendered or during the render. Now, intensity is going to require less RAM and color is going to require more RAM because uh, you also store the color information of each uh, your emitters. So, let's uh, instead of intensity, let's choose color here and start our uh, core rendering application. Uh, and see what we are going to get. So I rendered this scene for almost 10 minutes and after the render is finished as you can see we get these sliders and we have these multi-light windows. Uh, beside ESO and Shutter Suite that we're going to be discussing later on as you can see we have three different sliders we have a slider for our area top emitter, we have a slider for our area right emitter, and a slider for our area left emitter. Also, if you have your preview windows opened, you can have a preview of your changes before you apply to your main render. So if I go ahead and turn uh, off my area top emitter, you can see the changes in your preview window. Let me take a look here. So let's turn the right emitter also off and refresh our render. And as you can see, in a second, we have a, a great render and we have turned off two light and we are just uh, lighting our scene using the left emitter that we have here. I can turn this one also. And if I wanted to, I can refresh it. So let's me turn on my area top emitter and refresh it also. So uh, also down here you have these uh, color changes. Let me just go ahead and actually right click and reset the light to the original value here. And this one too. Let me just reset it. There we go. Also down here you can change the color of your light. So let me go change my top color to maybe this blue here. And let me change this color maybe to this very pinkish and weird color and let's change this color maybe to something like this maybe and if I refresh it as you can see now we have changed the colors of our lights it's very cool I guess and uh, as you can see right now I have to click refresh to see the uh, effect of my changes in my uh, main rendering window. If you go to your file menu and select your preferences, 
under general you see you have this fast multi-light preview if you turn it on uh, you can actually see those changes in real time uh, using your GPU so if I turn this on uh, it's a bit clunky and it has some problems sometimes but it could be used uh, so let me just hit OK it can take some time there we go now as I change this values you can see uh, we are basically uh, making our changes in real time which is very cool so let's just uh, make this value here let's add some blue to the mixture and as you can see it's a very cool future so as you can see you can control both the color and the intensity of your lights using this slider and also these color pickers down here now if I get back to Cinema 4D quickly and in our multi-light section uh, if we uh, choose intensity here uh, then we are not gonna have access to these color pickers and we only can change the intensity of our uh, lights so there wouldn't be these color pickers if we uh, used intensity uh, in, instead of the uh, color uh, option now for each slider you can see you have these S and M buttons so S stands for solo so if you turn it on you're going to solo this uh, on this uh, light here and you basically turn the other lights off also you have this mute button so if you turn it on you can see you are disabling this particular layer so you can solo two layers if you want so now if I if I even increase this layer I'm not gonna get increase this uh, light the intensity of this light I'm not gonna get anything from it and let's get back to where we were there we go <laughs> so that's about let's get back to maybe this white color also you can do some cool stuff using your uh, slider you can actually animate this color and save them uh, for uh, your uh, you know uh, need I mean if you wanted to uh, turn a night to day turn day to night turn a very bright uh, room to a very dark room and turn the lights off you can simply do that using the sliders that you get so let me right click on my timeline and turn on auto key and let me just turn off all the lights here and let's go to maybe 15 frame here and also I'm going to my preferences and turn off these fast multi-light preview and hit OK so let's go to frame 15 and let's increase our top light here you can see the changes in your preview window let's go to frame 30 maybe turn this off and turn this one on go to frame 45 let's go ahead and add this green and also let me change the green to let's see maybe <clears throat> something like this and now you have a and as you can see you have this nice beautiful animation let me just go ahead and refresh it here there we go <laughs> Now, if you wanted to save this uh, animation and this sequence, we have about 45 frames. So let me just change my max frame to 45 here. If you wanted to save these frames, you can simply go to your option, file, and save sequence. And then you define where you want to save your file and the format. And also down here, you can uh, choose whether uh, your lights uh, will be uh, rendered out separately or uh, as a composition so if you turn this uh, option on you are gonna get uh, 45 frames for each of your lights and you're gonna get three different passes that you can uh, use them in your compositing app but if you uh, have this option unchecked you're gonna get just the uh, composition and the combination of these three lights here so let me hit OK and we haven't defined any pass let me just cancel this out okay let's finally maybe reset these lights here let me select it first of all 
and reset it and there we go okay now a few things to consider when you're working with multi-light if you have spotlight or IES lights in your scene uh, they are not compatible with color multi-light I mean uh, if you have them in your scene you can uh, use color for your other emitters but if you have IES or spotlight in your uh, multi-light uh, window you are not going to get the color picker for your IES or your spotlight so you're just going to be able to change the intensity of your IES and spotlight uh, then uh, remember that uh, using intensity or color or multi-light in general uh, is not going to add to your render time but it's going to require RAM intensity uh, needs less RAM than color Another thing to consider is the fact that if you want to have separate controls over your lights and over your emitters, you need to have separate materials. I mean, in this scene we have three emitters, and if I applied only one emitter material to these three emitters, I would have had just one slider in my multi-light window and in my core rendering application so if you want to have separate control over this emitter this emitter and this emitter or whatever emitter you have in your scene make sure you have separate materials applied to them now you can actually use a multi-light to control uh, your physical sky or your sky dome or your image base so if you had for example physical sky uh, enabled uh, you would have had another slider for your sky and another slider for your sun or if you use image base you would have had a slider for your image based uh, lighting and you could have increased uh, the intensity and the contribution of that image uh, to the illumination of your scene so uh, remember that also so that's about multi-light and I think it's a very cool and useful future and uh, definitely uh, it's uh, really unique to Maxwell. I mean, uh, there are some other uh, render engines that uh, give you the capability to uh, render out different light passes and use them in your compositing app. But being able to uh, change your lighting, uh, the intensity and the color of your lights uh, in real time, in render time or after render time, is really, really unique and great future. So that's about multi-light. Thank you guys for watching this tutorial. It was a free sample from our comprehensive introduction to Maxwell Render for Cinema 4D course. Make sure to visit our website mograflas.com and check the entire course out.